Hi guys, AJ J here and I am back with another video. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you a five year update on my VSG um, surgery. If that's something that you're interested in, keep watching. Also make sure you like, comment and subscribe so that you can see more videos like this. Okay, y'all, so I basically wanted to talk about my VSG surgery and also like my glow up, if you want to call it like a glow up story. So um, five years ago, well, actually it was before five years ago, about six years, six, seven years ago, I was just miserable with life. <laughs> Like, um, and I really want this video to touch somebody who is either like in the process of getting their VSG or, you know, you're like, you just had it and just to give you things to look out for and what to expect. So, um, first I'm going to go on my experience, what made me like choose to get VSG um the actual experience of vsg and then hereafter like <laughs> life now i had my children young i had my first son at 21 years old i had my second child at 24 years old 20 24 yeah um i had them like two years they're two years and two weeks apart in age so my first son i end up gaining a brown I say 80 pounds, no, I was 150. I got all the way up to 209, I believe. Yeah, I had got up to around 200 pounds. So I had gained around 40 pounds, 50, 50, 60 pounds, somewhere around there with my first son. I ended up losing probably about 20 pounds after that. So I got back to around like 180, somewhere around there. Um, it, I still wasn't comfortable because I was used to, at my heaviest, I, before my children, I was 150 pounds. All through high school, I was like 120, 130, I was thin. After I had my first son, I gained 60 pounds and then I lost 20. So I still had an extra 40 pounds that was just on me. You get what I'm saying? Then I ended up getting pregnant like a year later, like almost a year, year and a half later, right after I had my son that, and I didn't lose any of that weight. So I gained another like 40 pounds with him. So I had got up to, I believe 209 pounds was my heaviest while I was pregnant. So during that time, um, I lost, I think I got, I lost like 10 pounds. Y'all, I did not, I ain't lose that weight. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, baby girl did not lose their weight afterwards. Um, with my first son, I was fine. With my second son, I ended up having postpartum depression. So just in general, I've always dealt with like depression, but um, the way that I handled depression and it wasn't just with postpartum. Okay, so the way that I deal with depression in general is to eat i'm an emotional eater so i ate y'all i was eating a pack of fucking oreos a day yes do y'all know how many calories is in one oreo or i think two oreos is like 140 calories y'all i was eating a pack of oreos a day then on top of that i would like eat breakfast i would eat lunch I would have a snack. My snack was a double stack. The four for four it used to be four for four. I believe it's like seven dollars now. But this, like, this was like 2015, y'all. 2015, 2016. I would eat a four for four. Then I would go to school, leave school, come home and cook and eat again. This is what I was doing in a day. So baby girl did not <laughs> lose any of the baby weight, none at all. So over a span of I had Hunter in April. By the time like December hit of 2015, y'all, I was at 220 pounds. I was at 220. So I had lost, I had got to like 190 and I end up going all the way to 220. So y'all, I gained like another 30, 40 pounds after I had my son. So 
I was like, okay, but I, I couldn't see it. Like y'all, I was a bank teller. It was so bad. Like I gained so much weight in such a short amount of time that one of the clients or members of the credit union that I worked at, she came back like two months. Like she hadn't been at this specific location for like two, two and a half months. She came back and she asked me where I went because she, I gained so much weight so fast that I didn't even look like myself. She was like, oh, where's the other young lady? The other like girl that, you know, worked here. She was here about two months ago. And I realized like she was talking about me. Like that's how much weight I gained. I was like, oh, I don't, <laughs> You, we got so many rotating people. She probably had another branch. I ended up lying to the lady. By December, I was so miserable with my life, y'all. And I was so miserable being at my job that I ended up quitting my job. I quit it. I said, fuck it. I like, I'm overweight, I'm depressed. My marriage was going downhill. Like me and my husband was getting into it like all day, every day. I just did not feel like myself because of the postpartum, but also because now I'm in a fucking fat suit. Like no offense to like overweight people. If you're confident being overweight, baby, kudos to you. I was just uncomfortable being in my body. So anyways, I end up leaving there and I started working at like a contact center or whatever. I end up, I, I, I stabled my weight. I was a little bit stable because I had to walk from the parking lot all the way up the stairs to where my contact center was. So I kind of maintained, like I lost maybe like 10 pounds because I was walking and stuff every day. And I wasn't eating as much. Like, of course, because I'm on the phone, I couldn't eat as much. So I wasn't gaining as much weight or whatever. I was actually like losing a little bit. It wasn't a whole lot. It was just maybe like 10 pounds at most. So I end up leaving that job and I end up working at another sedimentary job. But the walk, like the walk that I was getting in from working at the contact center was like baby almost a mile mile and a half a day from where like the my actual seat was and where my car was it was about like a mile and a half with going back and forth so I went from doing that every day you know five days a week to literally not having none of that exercise at all so over a span of a year Y'all, I gained 20 more pounds. I had got up to 30, might be 25 more pounds. So I ended up getting up to 240 pounds. My heaviest weight, I believe, was two, 248. Baby girl was big. And I'm only 5'1". <laughs> so what made me be like, okay, Asia, you have gained entirely too much weight. Like, you need to lose weight. I end up going on a trip with my family, with my two sons and my husband. We end up going to Disney World, um, Universal Studios, and the Bahamas. So I this was in 2017. Yep, 2017. So 2014, yep, 2014, I had did the same trip. I was fine. You get what I'm saying? This was right after I had my um my youngest, I mean my oldest son. So I hadn't had I hadn't gained all that weight yet. I still was, you know, around 180. So I was able to get on a rise. I was able to walk. I was fine. You get what I'm saying? Y'all. This second go round. Baby girl was not I was breathing hard. I was out of breath. My legs were swelling up. It was to the point my dad had to push me in a wheelchair around Disney World. I couldn't even enjoy the the experience with my children because I had gained so much weight and it made me like not in, immobile, but it restricted a lot of my activity. So the rides that I was able to get on, you know, in 2014, I was not able to get on the rides this time. And I'm like, and you know, sometimes when you gain it all that weight, you don't really realize it. You know, people who have not been like obese, 
you're like, oh, I don't understand how people could sit there and gain all that weight. Da, 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 da. It's easy to gain weight. Baby, it's hard to lose it, okay? <laughs> it's very hard to lose it. And when you gain weight, it comes on so fast. And a lot of times, especially now since we got such like fast fashion, everything is so stretchy. If you not wearing like Levi jeans or, you know, the actual like jeans, you not going to notice that you're gaining weight. Like you're not going to notice. So for me, because I was wearing a whole bunch of stretchy clothes and stuff, I really did not notice over those like three years that I had gained so much weight. I, I really didn't realize it. So it wasn't until I went back to Universal that I realized like, oh my God, like I can't fit on any of these rides. Then we went to Disney World, my legs swole up, I couldn't walk, my dad had to push me in a wheelchair. Like I wasn't really able, like I, I'll insert pictures of like how I looked during that whole entire time. So that trip really just was like an eye opener for me. Oh, and then not only that, when we were at Universal, I believe it's the Hard Rock Roller Coaster, y'all. They have an attendant that stands at the front of a roller coaster, and they have like a, a actual like actual size um, seat that that the roller coaster like has. And they make you, if they feel like you, if by visually looking at you, if you look as though you're too big, they're going to act, they're going to pull you out from the crowd, from the line that's going into the ride and say, hey, I need you to sit in this seat. Baby, if it don't do, you can't get on this ride. So when he did that to me, I was just like, Okay, yeah, no, some some gotta give, <laughs> baby. Some gotta give. I like it. It became like embarrassing. You get what I'm saying? I'm restricted from having you know memorable experiences with my children. Now I'm publicly being embarrassed because I can't physically like get on rides and stuff because I'm too big. So for me, you know, for me. I decided to make that change. I was like, yeah, I got to do something about it. Not only that, but I just felt uncomfortable. Like I just felt uncomfortable in my own skin. I had never been that heavy before. I didn't know how to dress myself. I was so jealous. Oh my God, I was so jealous of the big plus size women who were so confident. I would watch YouTube, you know, channels of plus size women. They looked freaking amazing in my eyes. And I probably had body dysmorphia, but... I, I did not feel like I was pretty. I didn't, I did not feel pretty at the size that I was, my heaviest weight. I just, I felt miserable. Not only that, but I just, I started to develop health issues. So I had sleep apnea. I was pre-diabetic. I was out of breath all the time. I end up having, um, I would be swollen a lot. So it, it just, I just felt uncomfortable. So at that point I ended up going to the doctor and um, well, the health system in my area, I end up um, finding or getting information on how to start my whole bariatric uh, journey. So at that point, I went to a meeting. A lot of times, well, in, in my city, I'm from Detroit. I don't stay in Detroit right now, but during this time, I was living in Detroit. So in Detroit, they have you go to a meeting. It's like a two or three hour meeting where they explain what BSG is. And um, from there, they have you go through a whole like 10 step process of, you know, start to finish of you getting your surgery. So first I had to go with a support person. I had to go to this meeting where they informed me about the surgery, what it does, Blase split. They take took all of my insurance information, and um, they said, you know, we'll get back to you and we'll tell you if your insurance covers it or not. To my knowledge, most insurances, commercial insurances, cover it. Now, what you what is there are maybe some requirements. Some insurances are like, hey, you said you want it, you don't got to do nothing. We'll just approve it. We'll authorize it. You go have your surgery tomorrow. Other insurance companies are like, hey, no, it's a six-month waiting process. 
you have to go through these certain you have to wait six months before we'll authorize for you to have surgery then you have like medicaid if you decide to get it on medicaid which is um state insurance they also pay for it they have like a 12 month waiting period so you have to just consistently go to the bariatric doctor and they have to notate every month that you came to the doctor the bariatric doctor to talk to them and by the end of that 12th month they're like okay you can have your surgery so for me i had a six month waiting period so with the health system they also have requirements so my insurance had requirements and my health uh the health system itself had requirements which was that i had to go see a psych because a psych doctor um a therapist or a psychologist you have to go see them or a psychiatrist i believe a psychiatrist you have to go see them because they want to make sure mentally like you're in the right frame of mind to get this surgery because some people get it and literally they revert back to the same habits that they had before they had the surgery they just think that that getting the surgery is going to be the end all be all and i'm further down inside of the video i'm going to tell you like that it's not and the stigma and everything that comes with having the vsg surgery and it really annoys me because people think that it's a magic like oh boom you lose weight no like honestly it's only me and maybe two other people like i i know a lot of people who have this surgery saying personally in my own life who had this surgery who didn't like lost weight and then gain all of it back because they did not really change their mindset about like it being a lifestyle change any anywho we'll come back to that so for me they made me go to go see a psychiatrist they made me go to a dietitian because of course they want you to know like you this is a whole lifestyle change your diet is gonna have to change um i had to meet with my surgeon and i believe i had to keep a food diary so i had to do this for six months to prove that mentally and that I really like wanted this lifestyle change or whatever. So anyways, I did that. My insurance authorized the surgery and June 25th of 2018, I ended up having the surgery. I started in January by June, I was authorized to have my surgery. Today is June 25th. Tomorrow is my surgery date. Yes. Tomorrow is my surgery day, and I'm a little scared, just a tad bit, but I'm trying to be strong, and I'm trying to be that one, because, baby, I've been on liquid diet for the last week, and when I say, a bitch then lost some weight, hold on, let me show y'all, let me show y'all, let me show y'all, Oh Jesus, okay, so y'all probably, hold on, wait a second, Woo. Jesus, see what... <laughs> Okay, yes, mama got a fumpa. Mama does have a fumpa. I'm just gonna warn you, mama got a fumpa. But anywho, so do y'all see my stomach? Like my stomach was a lot bigger, a whole lot bigger before I did this liquid diet. Yes, oh, I gotta get rid of that. So anywho, um. <laughs> Okay guys, so if you want to hear me continue to talk about my crazy experience that I'm about to go through and what I've been through on my liquid diet, continue to watch. So um, the day of surgery, so the day before surgery, you can't eat or drink, you know, normal surgery stuff. Um, you can't eat or drink 12 hours before surgery oh also uh it was uh i had to lose weight it was as well i had to lose 10 pounds between january and june so i ended up doing that as well so the day of surgery i was like 200 and 200 and like 38 37 it was literally like right there like right at 10 pounds like it might have been nine point something something um the day of surgery i went into surgery they put me under they do do it liposcopically so it's um they don't cut you open i know back in the day they used to cut you open but they don't cut you open anymore um they just have these like robot things they like 
put it into your body and they do it that way. So let me show you my scars. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, I'm not trying to show too much. But as you can see, I have one right here, one right here, one right here. Is it on this side? Uh, I believe right here. Yeah. So those are all of my marks. Y'all, I'm, I'm still losing weight. Okay, I know my stomach look a mess. But I'm still losing weight. Next year, I'm getting a whole mommy makeover. So, everything going to be tight. But anyway, yep, they do it liposcopically. And they have you under it. Then they wake you up. So, within the first 12 hours, you need to get up and walk. But that's like after any surgery. So that you won't get blood clots that travel to your lungs. They need for you to get up and walk. So, me... Y'all, within, I think I had my surgery at like 8 a.m. By the time 3 o'clock in the afternoon came, I was like up and I was in my room. And I just got up and I started walking. Like, I was just up and walking, y'all. So, to be honest, um, the downtime for the surgery is only about two weeks. So, if you really like, I, I ain't got no time to be off work like that your earliest to come back will probably be around like two weeks or whatever the things that you need to really like look out for so I, I was only in the hospital for around like two days at the most it, i wasn't in there long um and then i end up going home and i was you know at home recovering for a month i took i think i took six weeks off of work and FMLA, you know, pay for it. I had short-term disability, all that stuff. So whoever is like doing it that way, just talk to your HR department. They'll tell you how FMLA and short-term disability, all that stuff work when you having a surgery. But anyways, so um, y'all, the first month is the hardest thing, okay? I honestly, I feel like, this whole experience was harder or it was it, it might have been as mentally draining as having my children like it wasn't as taxing on the body but mentally it was as draining as like having a baby so and on my moms y'all already know how them first like two three months are when you had your baby and how mentally like it you be all over the place that's how I felt having this dang on surgery. Like, I low-key regretted it. Like, I regretted having the surgery the first month that I had it. Because if you think about it, you have no self-control. Like, clearly, you're in that, like, place because you had no self-control when it came to eating or whatever. So, it's like, this literally forces you. It's kind of like you're on punishment. Like, I'm just, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Like, I felt like I was on punishment. I felt like, why did I do this to myself? I was, the first night of me sitting at my house, I was just watching food commercials. Like, I know, sick, right? I was watching food commercials because you don't have an appetite. Like, when they when they first cut your stomach, you don't have an appetite. Like, you just, you don't feel hungry. So, I don't know if mentally I was trying to make myself become hungry or if it was just me being sad because I knew I couldn't eat it. But, it, y'all, it was so weird. It was just so, so, so weird. Like, I was just sitting there watching food commercials and YouTube videos of people cooking YouTube videos of, like, delicious food that I knew I couldn't eat. Um, Another thing, so I was depressed. Like, I got depressed all over again. And you can't eat. Like, you just, you can't eat. Like, I literally was, like, broth, chicken broth. Um, I, Did I have milk? I forgot how the steps went. They also give you a book on like what you can eat at what what time because your stomach is healing. So the first like week or two, baby, all you eating is chicken broth. Literally chicken broth and I think maybe like grits, like baby food. Like it was like, it was bad y'all. It was, it was just, it was tough that first month and I had constipation. Make sure you guys are like drinking prune juice or not anything acidic because you can't like 
you know, drink anything acidic because your stomach is healing. But um, make sure like you're balancing the prune juice and I mean, balancing taking your protein shakes and um, taking like fiber. Cause you need something with fiber in it. Like if if you gotta get like liquid fiber, whatever you gotta do, do what you gotta do because that constipation was, I've never had that type of constipation in my life. It was to the point I had to go to the hospital. I think twice that month I had to go to the hospital because I just, I couldn't pass my bowels. It was bad, it was bad. So, um, anyways yeah just make sure you keep up on that and make sure you have like stool softener and ask for like the legit stool softener from the doctor like prescribed stool softener not that little fiber one or uh meta what is it Me Miralax Miralax wasn't doing nothing okay <laughs> it wasn't doing nothing like it got to the point y'all I had to figure out how to administer my own like uh what's some things called y'all know what i'm talking about i had to figure out how to do that on my own because i was that constipated the first like month month and a half anyways so that's one more thing to look out for um second thing that i know they tell you that you should not drink water and eat at the same time but honestly that's the only reason why I probably stay as small as I have over these last five years. And that's just being honest. Um, I've always been a water drinker. Another reason I've stayed small is that I don't drink my calories. So I guess the advice that I can give to you is do not drink your calories. Don't like drink coffee, like coffee juice, all that stuff. If you drink coffee, do like one cup a day. You get what I'm saying? Don't drink coffee, pop juice you know, all the rest of this stuff. I just, I just drink water. So the only calories that I'm really getting are the ones that I eat. And seeing that I don't eat a whole lot, like I've been able to maintain my weight. So um, that's the one thing. Second thing is I don't really snack on um, candy and stuff. So when I first had my surgery, I really didn't do that because it gives you dumping syndrome. I don't know if anybody told you about this, but if you take in too much food or if you take in too many sugary like item foods or whatever, yo, you're going to feel as though you're dying. Like when I say you're going to feel as though you are dying, you're... I had dumping maybe like, three times out of my whole entire like experience say in the beginning and it only happened like the first year or so y'all so um now i don't get dumping i do get like a full feeling to where it's like ugh, like oh my goodness i ate too much like i could feel that i ate too much but aside from that like i don't get dumping like if i eat something sugary or whatever but when you first have the surgery do not don't do it don't do it just eat how you supposed to that first year eat how you supposed to bake all like that first year i was able to lose majority of my weight because i stopped eating fast food i stopped eating fried foods because i tried to do all that like right after i had my surgery no being a dummy so i i was having like dumping syndrome and i was like i just didn't feel good so um, I learned how to bake all of my meats to the point it was like very, very tender or whatever. So for the first year, I was just baking all of my food. And then um, I was I was mainly eating meat, saying proteins, and then I would have like a small side or whatever. And then I was just drinking water. That's all I did for the first year. On top of that, y'all, I don't know if they forewarned you, but once you start losing weight at my six month mark, I got pregnant. They do tell you to watch out for that, okay? They tell you to watch out for that after you have this surgery because I don't know what it is about your body when you're like overweight. I don't know if your body feels like, hey, we shutting down certain stuff reproductive wise, but like once you start losing weight, baby, I don't know if Miss Mamas is like, are we back in action? I don't know what happens. But y'all, within the first six months of me having a surgery, I was pregnant. 
And my thing is, me and my husband before this, we would never use protection, like at all. When I was at my heaviest, my period, I wouldn't even have a period. Like sometimes my period would just disappear like for a month and then it'll just come back the next month whenever it felt like it. So I never got pregnant, like never got pregnant. All of a sudden, I lost around like 40 pounds at this point. I was probably at like the 40 or 50 pound mark. End up getting pregnant, y'all. Watch out for that. <laughs> if you are not trying to have kids, I need you to use protection because you are very, 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 very fertile. Um. Anyway, so at that point, I had got pregnant. So I was having morning sickness on top of craving sweets. So then I was having dumping. Like, it, y'all, it was... It was a drag, okay? But I will say during that pregnancy, I did not gain any weight. Like none of the, I didn't gain any weight during that pregnancy. I was still losing weight. And once I had my daughter, my smallest weight, which I've maintained since then is 160 pounds. So right now I'm 160. This is the weight I've been for the last, my daughter is three years old. So the last three years, I've just been 160. So now I want to lose around like 30 pounds. So I am going to the gym now and, you know, getting, because I do have loose skin. So let's get onto that. Because I was not working out while I was, you know, um, losing my weight, I do have loose skin. I got the jiggles right here. And as you can see on my stomach, um, I got loose skin or whatever. So I am toning that up. Me, I chose to, you know, wait until I got down to my actual goal weight to go and have surgery and all that stuff. Because when you lose weight, your boobies, like my boobies used to look so good when I was big. That was one thing that I did like when I was big. My boobies were nice and full and voluptuous and plump. <sighs> they left. When that weight left, girl, my boobies left too. So they they are saggy. They're saggy. My arms are saggy. And, you know, I'm not toned. So I am currently in the gym now to get all that together. That is something to look out for and to notate. If you are, you know, having this weight loss surgery, you are going to have saggy skin. And more than nine times out of ten, you're going to have to have cosmetic surgery if you're trying to look a certain way okay if you want your stomach tight you want to wear bikinis this and that nine times out of ten if you are not working out right now from the beginning to when you get to your goal weight baby you gonna have to have surgery like you gonna have you gonna have saggy saggies it's it all depends though on how much it bothers you or not to each his own so i've been 160 this whole entire time so the way, like I told you before, the way that I've been maintaining is I don't snack. I barely snack, y'all. If I do snack, I'm snacking on nuts. I'll go to Walmart and get like their their uh, nut trail mix. Um, They have some. I just got some last week. They still have some there where it's like almonds, walnuts, pecans, yogurt, uh, little yogurt balls, raisins. I'll snack on stuff like that. I don't just be sitting there snacking on candy and stuff. And a lot of times, um, from what I've experienced firsthand with people who had the surgery around the same time that I've had, they drank their calories. So they were just like, okay, I can't eat a lot, but they were drinking a liter of pop a day. That's still calories. So, um, and then... Um, another thing that I noticed is that people were snacking because when you get the surgery, instead of eating one large meal at, you know, three times a day, you're eating smaller, smaller portions multiple times a day, like more times a day. So I would see a lot of people because like you, you don't get hungry after having a surgery, like you will forget to eat. So when you do remember to eat, you don't want to sit there for another hour cooking. You get what I'm saying? So they getting stuff that's fast. And a lot of times stuff that's fast is not healthy. So they will sit there and they'll snack on, or they'll either do that or they're snacking on something that's not healthy. So like chips, donuts, um, what is it? Like 
sunflower seeds like they you get what i'm saying like i just i seen a lot of that so those are things to notate if you're having the surgery and then thereafter if you've already had this surgery and you're trying to figure out like well why am i why am i stalling out oh or you like two years out this is for the people who are after who have hit have um have passed that one year mark if you're trying to figure out like well, why am i not losing weight why am i gaining the weight it could be because yeah you're eating a smaller portion sizes but what are you eating though second thing for the people who are about to have the vsg surgery um you there are going to be times within that one that first year that you plateau so do not get discouraged or mad or feel like you're not doing enough if you plateau for you know a week or two like two or three weeks or a month you like oh my goodness i only lost 40 pounds because then it'll be like you'll plateau for a month and then the next month you lost 20 pounds and it's like what in the world like you get what i'm saying so don't get discouraged if you plateau that's something that's normal normally if you plateau during the surgery is because you're not eating enough calories and your body is going into survival mode so just uptake if if that's what you're doing saying like you like oh man i plateau so you restrict your calories even more don't do that like just change what you're eating like just choose healthier choices and but still maintain that i believe it's 1200 calories a day they still want you to eat still maintain that 1200 calories and then incorporate some type of like exercise so go walking or something if you're not already doing that next thing that oh and i am not a, a health consultant or a dietitian so this is all alleged okay consult your doctor first before doing that if you have plateaued consult your doctor first to ask them like hey do you think this is the reason why i plateaued but just know that it's normal to plateau so the uh, next thing is um i know they tell you not to drink water and eat at the same time but i always did that so i continue doing with that habit that is a habit that i continue throughout my whole entire surgery and i honestly i feel like it contributed to me keeping my weight off like because if you drink and eat at the same time your pouch can only your pouch can only hold like i believe two to three ounces so if you drink water it's taking up some more of that like capacity that you have to where they feel like food should be because they normally tell you that you need to drink 30 minutes before and drink 30 minutes after you eat but no nah, y'all i couldn't do it and i'm just being all the way 100 i'm trying to think of what else what other advice i could give being five years out five years out i'm about to you know take this next part of my journey look i'm five years and i'm still here still working on my weight loss <laughs> still working on my weight loss so i just wanted to say all that to tell you like it's not gonna happen overnight okay like don't if you're two years in and you're like oh my goodness i'm still not at the weight that i want to be um don't don't be so hard on yourself okay take it day by day and just know rome was not built in one night okay i'm five years out and i still got 30 pounds that i want to lose and I still have cosmetic surgery and stuff that I want to have. So, but I'm just taking it day by day at this point. And I'm enjoying the journey. Especially, like, now since I'm going to the gym. Um, I really feel like it's more so, like, a spiritual type thing for me now. Like, yeah, I had the surgery. Oh, and understand that the surgery is a tool. It's not a magic wand that's going to just magically make you like lose weight and be happy you still have to put work in and that really irritates me with people who are outside of the vsg community 
who feel like, oh my God, like it's they're taking the easy way out. Like, no, it's not easy. <laughs> okay. This is coming from somebody who is five years out. It's not easy. You still have to put in the work. I'm five years in and you see, I still have 30 pounds that I have to lose. And guess what, baby? I can't get back on the damn surgery table and tell them, hey, can I have another weight loss surgery so that I could lose the rest of the 30 pounds because baby is underneath BMI now, okay? So you still have to put work in. You still have to do it. Now I go to the gym. I, t I do classes. I don't really like, like, you know, going to the gym, lifting the weights, getting on the treadmill. Like, that's not me. You get what I'm saying? So my thing is, find what works for you in regards to your weight loss journey and going up and your plan or strategy um, to lose weight. For me, I like taking the classes that the gym offers. They do combat body combat salsa um what is it ballet uh body attack i do pilates like i do an array of different things i don't just go to the gym get on the treadmill and then lift the weights i don't do that that's too boring for me too much of a routine i'm it, i will fall off you get what I'm saying? Not only that, I'm a social person. So in the classes, we're all doing it as a group. And not only that, I'm able to talk to people and, you know, make friends and stuff because we're constantly seeing each other every week or every, you know, whatever day that the class is scheduled. So that's what works for me. Figure out what works for you. I will say that, like, figure that out. But just know I'm five years in and... It's, I'm still working on it every day, <laughs> every day. So once they say, hey, that one year will help you get X amount of weight off, yes, you get that amount of weight off, but all that is is a kickstart. It still is a lifestyle change. You still have to change your lifestyle. It's just a tool. That's all it is. It's just to help you better equip yourself to lose the weight, okay? So for me, it helps me not overeat. But I still have to watch what I eat. I still have to go do put, incorporate exercise to stay in shape and get the rest of this weight down. You get what I'm saying? And I just, I don't like when people who are outside of the VSG community just try to make it seem like it's just so easy. Not only that, especially like right after you have the surgery, it's so mentally and psychologically taxing on you. Then to sit there and be constipated and like, it's so many other things that come with having the actual surgery where, you know, it, yeah, like it probably would have been easier to just go to the gym and just lose the weight <laughs> over, over, you know, the same span of time and i will say the same span of time because this is crazy y'all when i had my weight loss surgery a girl at my job decided to do it the natural way and me and her were the same size like we were same size same weight or whatever we lost our weight the same time in the same amount right she just had it in her she had the discipline in her i know me <laughs> I did not have the discipline to sit there and go. I didn't have the discipline nor the time. I was a mother. She wasn't a mother. You get what I'm saying? I was a mother or two at the time. I didn't have the time to spend at the gym for two and a half to three hours a day. You get what I'm saying? Um, but she did because she was single. So she lost the weight in the same amount of time. And um, she lost the weight in the same amount of time. And she lost the same amount of weight as I did. Thing is, baby, she gained half of that weight back. She gained half, almost half or all of it back. All because those two and a half to three hours every day that she was dedicating, she ended up having to get like another job, whatever. I don't know. It's not my business. She ended up getting another job, like a part-time job, which of course took away from her going to the gym for those two and a half, three hours every day. Within a month and a half of her doing that, half of her weight came back. So, I understand people are like, oh, do it natural, do it natural, do it natural. Yeah, but every, sometimes that don't fit into everybody's schedule and everybody's lifestyle. You get what I'm saying? So, do not feel bad if people are around you, they don't understand like why you want to have the surgery. Because I met a lot of people that was like that too, where... 
um, they were coming to me asking me about my journey. And then they were saying that other people were discouraging them from their weight loss journey and incorporating VSG into it. And it's like, forget what other people got to say. Because my thing is, I know how I felt being overweight. People were treating me differently. And like, I, I know how I felt. People was treating me differently. I know they say that fat shaming or like people don't act weird towards fat people. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. The way that I was treated and the way that I was stigmatized when I gained all of my weight compared to when I was smaller and even now is totally different than when I was overweight. Like, I, y'all, I low-key didn't even, I didn't go nowhere because it got that bad. Like, it got that bad for me when I was overweight. It wasn't just me feeling uncomfortable in my own skin, but other people around me were making me feel uncomfortable in my own skin because they were literally like Asian is that you <laughs> they didn't even recognize me and because they didn't recognize me like they just was treating me differently and I know it wasn't consciously because that's just how the constructures of our society is to like ostracize fat people but yeah it did not make me feel good and like yeah, I, I, that part of my life, I would never forget how people treated me when I was overweight compared to before when I wasn't overweight and then now that I'm not overweight. Like, that's why I still don't mess with people like that. <laughs> Even now, like, I don't, I don't mess with people like that because I just feel like that's wrong to treat people who are overweight. Like, you're treating them differently because they're overweight, like... Now, I'm continuing my weight loss journey. If you guys, if you are somebody who is currently, you know, new to BSG and you're new on your weight loss journey, make sure you comment in the comment section down below. Keep me updated. Uh, I'll follow you on Instagram so that I can follow your weight loss journey and see, you know, how things are going. We could sit and motivate each other. Um, cause I will be posting more videos like of me at the gym and stuff like that. So, and then hopefully next year, you know, I'll be getting all the rest of that other stuff together. So I'll be keeping everybody posted, but, um, yeah, like just do, do you, if you want to have the VSG surgery, forget what everybody else is saying, forget what your mama, auntie, grandma, cousin, best friend, husband, and that's another thing. If you are getting the VSG surgery and you could be in your relationship for a long time, long time, baby, your man is going to get insecure. Your man, partner, spouse, companion, whatever they gonna get a bit insecure i'm gonna tell you tonight they're gonna be feeling like oh you got the big head because you see her you lose the weight da, 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 da. that's another thing to watch out for pregnancies and breakups and when i say breakups i mean all relationships not just like with your spouse because a lot of people end up getting divorces after they have the weight loss surgery but also with friends, I fell out with so many people after I had my weight loss surgery. Like, it's okay when you're the fat friend. You get what I'm saying? The friend who got low self-esteem. The friend who, you know, don't nobody, don't know no other dudes want to talk to. It's it's okay when, when, when you that friend. But when you sit here and finally do something for yourself, and you start investing into yourself and you stop, you know, really caring or worrying about everybody else around you. Oh, baby. People start showing their true colors. They start showing their true colors. I had, it, it was some people who had the surgery around. And that's what I'm saying. Like, literally, I know eight to ten people who had the surgery, like, in real life, not on social media or anything like that but in real life who had the surgery it was uh two women who were friends for 10 plus years within a year of us having our surgery them two stopped messing with each other like so much stuff came out about how she was feeling about the friend that had via that had the vsg surgery like 
at the end of the day, the shady best friend or whatever, she just liked having her around because she was the fatter best friend. She or both of them were plus size, but she she was more plus more plus sizer. You get what I'm saying? And she liked that she was the plus size friend. You get what I'm saying? She was bigger than her. She felt like she was better than her. So you are going to see some of that if if woo baby, and that's what I'm saying. Like. Mm. having this surgery a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot comes with having a surgery it's not just losing weight it's mental it's like physical it's emotional like you may have thought that you had the support system that you thought you had and then baby you get into it and you realize like oh none of these bitches was really here for me like all these bitches was fake I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like your kids. Like, and you end up turning into that because people start really showing their true colors. But at the same time, you end up gaining new friends too. Like, I, I end up gaining new people. So, I am officially ending the video now at this point. Okay? I'm officially ending it. So, if you guys have any more questions that you think I didn't, like, elaborate on, just put them down in the comment section and I will um, respond back. Like, I literally respond back to all of my comments as long as I see them. Um, but, yes. Anyways. Okay, thank you guys. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Also, make sure if you are not subscribed and you made it to this point, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Subscribe, girl, guy, whatever you want. I accept all. I accept all, okay? Anyways, see you guys in the next video. Bye.